I remember when I got my first car. It was an incredible time in my life. The time I got my very first car, I was 21 years old. And if I remember well, since I was 19, there was nothing that I wanted more than my own car. At home, there was no car that I could drive. When I was 19, I still didn't know how to drive. But I started getting some lessons from some friends here and there, from some, you know, this one and that one, just teaching me how to drive, people who were gracious enough with their cars. And from that time, I decided that I want my own car. I want my own car. I, I could not wait for the day that I would go home and drive in with my own car and show my mother, show my sisters. And so I started saving up some money when I was 20 years old. I had a job that allowed me to be able to buy bread and save everything else, right? I, I wasn't really earning big money or anything like that. I made just enough for me to buy bread, drink water and save the rest towards this car that I wanted. And so the time finally came after a year and a half of saving, I had an opportunity to buy it. It was black in color, a Kia Picanto, <laughs> boy. It was the most exciting time in my life. I tell you this, I was so excited, right? At home, there was no car. I had a car. I was so excited to just go home with my brand new car. Well, a secondhand car, but it was brand new to me. And finally, Poloko owns his own car. And I was so excited that time that I still remember I used to, I, I would drive 150 kilometers to a different city just to go have lunch. If anybody needed to go somewhere, I told them that I had a car. I'll take you there. I just wanted every excuse to drive. I, I almost lived in the car, to be honest with you, because I did not want to get out of the car. I was so excited. I was so happy. I had so much joy that I never imagined before. Because finally, after working hard, after saving up, I had an opportunity and I was able to get my own car. But it wasn't long after that, that I saw somebody who went to school with me and they were driving a Mercedes Benz, right? He was driving a Mercedes Benz. I still remember this guy gave me a lift in his car, right? While my car was parked somewhere, we were going somewhere in his car, in his Mercedes Benz. We went to school together, same age, He's got a Mercedes Benz that they bought for him at home. And in an instant, I all of a sudden was not happy with my car anymore. All of a sudden, I wasn't happy with my car. Here's where I'm going with this. Where I'm going with this is that we know it has been said time and time again that comparison is a thief of joy. It steals, your, it steals your peace. It steals your joy. And so I want to say something to you today that I think is so important and it might change your life, right? These three words might change your life forever. And here it is, mind your business. Mind your business. I'm telling you now, if you want to be happy, if you want to be content, mind your business. You cannot be content when your nose is in somebody else's business, somebody else's bank account, somebody else's garage, somebody else's bedroom. All of a sudden, you, you're not happy with the spouse that you have because you're comparing them to somebody else's spouse. You're not happy with the car that you have because you're comparing it to somebody else's car. You're not happy with the house that you have because you're comparing it to somebody else's house. You're not happy with the provision that you have, the, your resources, your money, because all of a sudden, you are comparing it to somebody else's. Have you noticed? That very often you are happy with what you have until you look at what somebody else has. When you walk down the aisle, you are so happy to be walking down the aisle to your husband. Or as you saw your wife walk down the aisle, you were so happy to spend the rest of your life with this person. But the moment that you started looking outside your home, you found actually so many people who are much more attractive, so many people who are much smarter, so many people who are much richer, so many people who are just better. 
newsflash, there will always be someone better. There will always be something better. Always. You and I can never get to a point where we are the best of the best and we have the best of the best. There'll always be someone better, something better. And so, I want to suggest to you today that if you want to have peace, if you want to have joy, to mind your business. See, some of you have worked so hard to get to where you are. You cannot take away from that by comparing your progress to somebody else's. See, I still remember when I sat with this, uh, with, with, with this guy in his Mercedes Benz while my Kia Picanto was parked somewhere, I still remember thinking to myself, how is it that he is here and I am where I am? How is it that this is his car and I drive what I drive? But see, the truth is, this was a car that was bought for him. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not player hating that. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with him having a car that was bought for him. What I'm saying is, I then should get my nose out of his business and how he got his car and how he got to where he is and how he has what he has and just be content. And I want you to understand now, com contentment is not complacency. We're not saying to be complacent. We're not saying to just settle where you are and live the rest of your life in mediocrity. That's not what we're saying. Contentment is I am happy with where I am. In spite of if I get to where I'm going to, I am happy with where I am. I refuse to live a miserable life just because I haven't made a million bucks. I refuse to be miserable just because I haven't bought that car yet. I refuse to be miserable. I'm going there. But while I'm going there, while I'm on my way, I will be content. I will be full of joy. I will be happy. And so, the word today, and my word for you, is to say to you, mind your business. Mind your business so that you would be at peace with what you have. So that you would be able to celebrate how far you've come what you've done. Mind your business. I want to tell you a quick story. There, there is a story of a farmer, or a farm owner. There is a story of a farm owner who wakes up one day and he decides that he needs workers for his farm. And so he goes out into the streets to find workers for his farm early in the morning. Early in the morning, at six o'clock in the morning, he goes out and finds some guys who are just standing idly by doing nothing. And he brings them into his farm to say, listen, I want you to work in my farm for the day. And they agree. He says to them, this is how much I will pay you for the day. I will pay you this much if you come work in my farm for the day. They agree on that amount. And I can only imagine that as you're standing there, you're excited, right? You're excited because finally I have something to do. I have a job. At the end of the day, this is how much I will have. At the end of the day, this is what I will have. It's exciting. Just like many of us, when you found your job, it was exciting, right? When you finally got that car, when you finally got married to that person, when you finally had children, when you finally had this, it was exciting because things are finally working out. Things are going my way. But here's the thing though. What then goes on to happen is that uh, they, they, go, they come to the farm, they work, the whole 12 hours. But during the day at around 9 o'clock, because since they started working at 6, at around 9 o'clock, the farm owner also go goes out once again and finds some more guys who are standing on the street. And he says to them, what are you guys doing? Now, nah, nothing much. Would you like a job? Yeah, sure. And he agrees on an amount with them. Great. Comes into the farm. Exciting time. At around 12 o'clock, he goes out again. Find some more guys. Now, this is halfway through the day. Find some more workers for his farm. And they go onto his farm to work. At around 3 o'clock, goes out again, finds more workers to work in his farm. And now all of these guys, the ones who, are, who have been working since 6 o'clock in the morning, all the way up until the ones who started working at 3 p.m., are all working together. And then around 5, he goes out when there's one hour of work left. He goes out to find 
more workers. And when he gets out there, he finds some guys who need a job, brings them onto his farm, and they work for one hour. And so you have people who have been working since six o'clock in the morning, who have worked a full 12 hours, and you have some people who have worked only an hour. And now, and now, and now when, when six o'clock hits, it is time to get paid, right? It's time to get paid, and so when it's time to get paid, the farm owner gathers everybody together and they begin to get paid. Here's the thing. The farm owner and the guys who came in at 6 o'clock in the morning had an agreement on how much they would get paid. That was the agreement. You are getting paid X amount. And the ones who came in last got paid as much as the ones who have been working since six o'clock. So these guys are standing by and uh, it, it, it says that he starts paying from those who came in last. When he pays those who came in last and those who, got, who, who, who were employed first, they are standing by and they are watching as th these guys who just got here get paid as much as they were promised. And I can only imagine immediately an instant feeling that says, I deserve more than them. I expect to be paid more than them because I have been here longer. But guess what? They all get paid the same amount from the ones who came in last to the ones who were in first. And the ones who were in first begin to grumble. Now this is Jesus telling the story. And then he says, he says that the farm owner looks at the guys who came in first as they grumble, as they complain, as they moan and cry about the fact that they were here first and they deserve more. He says to them, what was our agreement? What, what was the agreement? It wasn't the agreement that you were going to get paid this amount. Yeah, well, I feel like I deserve more. No, 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 no. See, here's the thing. You were happy when you came in. You were happy when you got offered this job, when you knew that you would get paid. The only reason you're not happy now is because you started comparing it to what everybody else got. The only reason you are now not content is because you looked at what everybody else got and now you are miserable. And just like that, you create your own misery. You created your own misery because if you had just looked at what you have, you would have been so happy as you remember the fact that you were once on the streets and you had no job. As you remember the fact that I took you off the streets and I gave you a purpose, I brought you onto my farm, I brought you onto this vineyard for you to come and work and earn something and make something for yourself and perhaps for your loved ones. But you overlook all of that and you go looking at what somebody else got. And so friends, I say today, please mind your business. You will never be happy if you begin to compare what you have in your garage to what somebody else has. What you have in your pocket to what somebody else has. You, you will never be happy. Oh, you will be shocked. <laughs> and there are big players out there who have more than you. Bigger houses, bigger cars, more money. They seem happier. They seem to have better jobs. Companies are bigger than yours. There's always somebody who has more than you. And if you will not learn to mind your business and just be grateful for what you have. And can I clarify once again? To say be grateful for what you have is not to say that you don't want more. To say be grateful for what you have is not to say that you don't expect more, that you don't look forward to more. That's not what we're saying. What we're saying is that we are grateful for where we are. We are content, right? Paul says, I've, I've, I've learned, I've learned the secret of being content. I've learned how to live with much and with little. And whatever I have, I know that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And so I say, do not allow comparison to steal your joy.
do not allow comparison to steal your peace. Mind your business and you will find that this indeed is the business that pays big.